What's going on? Welcome to today's video. I'm going to be walking you through a full back and bicep workout. I'm going to be detailing every cue that you need to hear, and I'm also going to be bringing you through sets, reps, everything that you need to know. So if you're someone who wants to make sure you have that V taper when you wear your shirts, you want to fill out your shirts well too, this is going to be a great workout for you to follow along. And if you're a beginner, do not worry. All you need to do is just adjust the volume to your experience level, which I'll explain later in the video. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. All right, so to start off, you want to do about five to 10 minutes of some type of light cardio just to get blood flow. We want to make sure that we're using dynamic stretching as well instead of static stretching. This is going to prepare you more for the movements for the back workout and also for the biceps as well. Now, I'm going to be showing you some activation exercises that I normally do whenever I hit back or biceps, and you should probably put these into your routine just to make sure that you're priming your central nervous system and getting ready for the movements that we're about to do. So prelins, on prelins, on prelins, on prelins, on prelins, I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left all my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back, tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and tell me. Cause that got prelins, on prelins, on prelins, on prelins, on prelins, on prelins, I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left all my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back, tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. After you're going to be doing your 5 to 10 minute warm up plus some foam rolling and dynamic stretching, you always want to do activation exercises with pretty light weight. I do about 3 to 4 sets for 15 reps when I'm trying to turn on a muscle group and make sure that I'm just ready for the movements coming in. So since we're heading back today, I'm doing some lat pull downs with this attachment. It doesn't really necessarily matter which attachment you're using, but you want to just make sure that you're getting blood flow in your lats and make sure that you're just getting everything warmed up, especially when you're doing heavy stuff like deadlifts, anything that's going to be a major movement that's going to recruit more muscle fibers, you want to make sure that you're warming up properly. So, even though we're going to be doing back and buys today, we're starting with deadlifts, which is going to be a movement that requires your entire posterior chain. So we're going to be using a lot of hamstrings, glutes to get the weight up. So we want to make sure that we're obviously doing a Romanian deadlifts as a form of activation exercises before we do our deadlifts. For warming up for your deadlift, you always want to start with at least the bar or a very light weight that you can get 15 to 20 reps with easy. You want to start doing acclimation sets and then as you ramp up the weight, you'll start lowering the reps. I'll put a scale here on the screen right now so you can see an example of what I'm talking about in terms of scaling your sets and making sure that you're priming your body correctly. Yeah, we different, you ride and I double my don't do discussions on bragging about hundreds. Don't go to your places, I know that they sunken. Don't call me your brother, I barely could trust you. I talk to a shorty, she bagging the bucket. And I'ma need all of my dollars on COVID, so hand me the money, I did be the buy. I'ma give all of my people a portion to build them a fortune on flipping the ride. I can't be mixy when if he the vibe. And 40 on 50 is really the time. Why is you all on my phone like you want me? Like you wasn't pushing the kick to the side. I don't know if you thinking of blood. So how big you make jumps is really dependent on your own personal preference. Um, I personally make one plate jumps until I get up to 405. Now obviously if you're a beginner you're going to have to make smaller jumps because you're not used to the heavier weight. If you're someone who's more advanced, you're probably going to be able to make one plate jumps and that's totally fine. Once you start to get heavier sets, your, your reps are going to start to go down until you're doing your working weight. This is very important. When you're going for a one rep max or anything specific and you want to hit a PR, there's a certain type of workout music that you need to be listening to. Either big drops, EDM, hardcore style, all right? I'm talking like SoundCloud remixes or heavy rock, all right? Old school rock and roll. You 
got to pick one of the two. PRs guaranteed. Trust is a doubt on my eyes. Done with your efforts, I'm dealing with pressures. I know it's a lesson, that's word of the wise. Dubbing the mixes, I'm mixing. I know I've been missing, I needed some personal time. F all the pitches, the mixes, I do with your digits, I mean it, I'm staying inside. what happens it's fun all right so we just wrapped up deadlift so we did our first compound movement now we're going to be doing two to three accessory movements and then we're going to be getting into biceps after that all right so when it comes to uh your compound movements and stuff i usually like to keep those uh for lower reps just to focus on mechanical tension and this is something that i include in every single one of my programs and i always make sure to do this we're starting heavy first making sure we utilize the heavy stuff use a lot of our energy there now we're going to make sure that we're doing accessory movements and then getting into the bicep stuff so the first thing we're going to do is a chest supported row and then we're going to be getting into two more exercises and these i usually tend to keep higher rep and i'll show you the exact rep ranges that i'm using today So for this specific movement, I'm personally doing a 3 by 15 and then I'm going to go a little bit heavier with lower reps and the next couple accessory movements for back and then we're going to be hitting biceps and the way I usually like to hit biceps is one high, heavier weight, lower volume, so lower reps around the 6 to 8 mark and then I'll do either one more or two more accessories, higher rep at about the 15 rep mark. I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling Thought in progression, it's all that I wanted A bow in affection, I summon it up, up, up in my routine. I do unilateral movements, but I never do the isolateral front lat pull down. And this one, you just want to make sure that when you're doing it, you want to make sure that your elbows are going all the way back. So kind of imagine that you're just pulling your elbows back. And make sure that you're contracting every single movement, okay? It's always important to incorporate some type of unilateral work whenever you're training chest, back, legs, arms, anything like that, instead of just doing compound movements and stuff like that. Uh, so for this particular movement, we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna be personally doing three sets of 10 on each arm. I'm going through something, that's why I call it Thought and progression, it's all that I wanted A bow and affection, I summon it up, up, up For our second to last back movement, we're going to do close grip lap downs and come over here. Justin's going to be pulling it straight towards the sternum and he's going to be really contracting his lats. And you can see he's going all the way up, stretching and then coming back down really slow and controlled and that's exactly what you want. So I'm going to 
gonna demonstrate the wrong way to do a close grip lap pull down that I see sometimes people do in the gym. So, as you can see, it was obvious that this was not coming down and touching my sternum, okay? So, when I do it this next time, I'm going to make sure that I'm driving my elbows down and back and really feeling the contraction with my lats, and making sure that I'm doing it in a controlled manner, and then it's going to, I'm obviously going to get a lot more bang for my buck this way. So, this is going to be a last movement for back. With my last movement for pretty much every muscle group that I use, that I do, I make sure to always go higher volume. I like to do like kind of burnout sets, make sure that I'm just overloading the muscle at the end of the workout. And then right after this, we're gonna be doing biceps as well. So um, basically for this, I'm gonna be doing a three by 20, which is higher rep and a little bit unusual compared to what most people do, which is in like the eight to 12 rep range. You can use all different types of rep ranges in your training. There's different types of way to train and build muscle. This is a way that I like to wrap up my workout. It's high intensity, it's difficult and we're just overloading the muscle. Let's go to the next one. Thinking of blood, toss on my crosses and dirt on my eyes. Done with your efforts, I'm dealing with pressures. I know it's a lesson, that's worth it the wise. Dubbing the mixes, I'm mixing. I know I've been missing, I needed some personal time. Full of pictures, dimensions, I know what you did, just I mean it, I'm staying in shock. Okay, so we just wrapped up a full back and biceps workout. We did four back movements and we did two bicep movements, all right? Now, the whole thing that you should take away from this workout is, first off, feel free to screenshot the workout right here. I'm gonna put it on the screen. You can screenshot that and try that on your own. If you're a beginner and you wanna follow this workout, stick with about three sets for everything. If you're intermediate or going to the more advanced side, you can go higher in the sets, four to five uh, range, and that should be enough to challenge you. Personally, for me, when I train, when I coach people, I always advise you to keep reps in reserve. So when you're training for these movements, keep at least two reps left in the tank. And then if your periodization, if your program lines up correctly, yes, you can max out on things. You can go to failure on different other things too. But for this specific workout, I'm gonna advise you to do two reps left in the tank for just about everything here. If you enjoyed the workout and you wanna see more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Comment what body parts you want me to train next. Subscribe for more and I'll see you on the next one. Oh,